So I'm James E. Clementi here filling in for Rob Lawrence at our next Prodigy Talk. We're here with Dr. Heather Davis, who won the Rocco Miranda Award here at EMS World with the NEMT Awards. And that really is considered a Lifetime Achievement Award. And I want to start off by asking, Heather, what does that award mean to you? Well, first, it was quite a surprise to win the award. In fact, they keep it a surprise. I had no idea and almost didn't make it to the ceremony to receive the award. Uh, so I do not consider myself in the league of others who have won that award. I think of folks like uh, Baxter Larman and Doug Koopas and Debbie Kaysen who have won that Lifetime Achievement Award and the immense national contributions that they have made. I just think of myself as a regular educator just doing normal everyday stuff. And so I, I just, the whole time that I was up there and people kept congratulating me, I kept thinking, yeah, but why me? Like, <laughs> like what? Um, so over the past couple of days I've really been trying to reflect on like sort of what is the path or what is the journey and how is it that I've had an opportunity to make an impact over the years. So I guess playing off of that what is what was your path to get here obviously there's been a lot of work and a lot of projects and a lot of energy what's been your path to get to a point where you're presented with such a prestigious award? Yeah so I think it really comes down to people who are willing to give you an opportunity. And so I think back to my first EMT instructor, Evelyn Givak, and uh, the person who recruited me into EMS when we were at Cornell College together, Rick Kallemeyer. And Evelyn took us to the Iowa State EMS conference and exposed me to this, to conference speaking. And I'm absolutely certain it was probably there that I was like, I want to do that. And so, you know, that probably lit a fire for me. And then I think about people um, well, probably my preceptors were like, oh, this girl's never going to be a paramedic. Uh, and they, they were probably surprised and when I had a chance to come back and speak at the Iowa conference. They were like, they're probably like, really? That girl? Um, but then moving to upstate New York, it was like taking a chance. Like she contacted me and she was like, I think you could do this. Like, and I loaded up my escort. Sadly, everything I owned fit in an escort at the time and moved to New York to work in New York. And so it's those opportunities opportunities or people like sort of saying you could do this and giving you that confidence and that is really how we build efficacy is is people telling you I think you could do this you should try this and then also being willing to do things I always say this being willing to do stuff for free so there were lots of times that people were like do you want to write do you want to teach this class and even though there wasn't compensation for it it was the opportunity to do that and so great preceptors in New York and opportunities like having Baxter Larman pluck this girl out of Colorado why they thought at UCLA they could take a 26 year old kid from Colorado and put her in front of 36 firemen and that was going to be a good idea and that was going to be successful I don't know how that worked out but it did right and it gave gave me a chance to move from my little community college in Breckenridge Colorado to move to UCLA and, but then also like to keep thinking about what are the opportunities and how you do set goals and, and keep moving into new opportunities um, to contribute to PHTLS at the state level and, and the EMT education committee and then to registry and those, those I just keep thinking about people who are willing to bring me along and give me opportunity and that's what I'm really grateful for. That's great, and I think the idea of taking those opportunities that are given to you really can help advance your career and has helped a lot of us advance our careers. If you were to give a piece of advice to new educators that are just coming into EMS, what would you tell them to help start that foundation as an educator? Um. I said, one of our first year medical students met with me the other day and she said, how do I get into medical education? And I gave her this piece of advice the other day. I always said, you know, I think many people find what we're doing these days transactional, like that everybody wants to be compensated for their time and that's not bad, but so much of the opportunities I was given really were about being willing to just appreciate that you would share your knowledge with me so I would 
do something to just be around you. You know what I mean? And so I can remember being at dinners across from Jim Page that somebody brought me to and getting to listen to that guy. I had no idea what people were talking about at that table. I did not belong. I was not in that league. I was under the table writing notes to ask people later, like, what are they talking about? But it was fantastic to have those opportunities. And so I would say, be open, be willing, be willing to invest yourself into projects if people are willing to have you. And then bloom where you're planted. You know what I mean? Do the best work you can everywhere you are. And I always think about this too, don't burn bridges because you can always go back. Be willing to take chances, but if it doesn't work out, you can always go back as long as you don't burn those bridges. Well, Heather, again, a big congratulations from us at the Prodigy team. Back to you.